uh, we are Saras Analytics. Uh, we are a data analytics company uh, building products and offering services to help small to mid-sized companies take ownership of their data and leverage that to grow. So for this particular session, I'd like to give you a quick demo of our product. Uh, it's called Dayton and it is a ma fully managed cloud data pipeline which takes data from different data silos from different applications, files, databases, uh, from basically from various different data source and builds a cloud data warehouse with that data without customers having to write a single line of code. It is a fully self-service cloud-based solution and that's what I'm going to uh, demo for you today. Another visual for this would be if you look at any company these days, uh, they leverage a lot of uh, software as a service applications, either for marketing, customer service, sales, inventory management, CRM, and for a whole bunch of other reasons. And oftentimes it becomes very difficult for a BI team or an analyst to easily do an analysis or put together an automated report uh, so that the business leaders have access to information when they need or analysts are doing analysis to find out ways to grow their business. So Dayton is designed to simplify, um, simplify the amount of time and effort it takes for companies to start taking ownership of their data. Uh, the demo goes like this. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the login page. You could use a username and password to get in. Let me do that right now. And over here, as soon as you log in, you're going to see a whole bunch of different data sources that are listed. And these data sources are categorized into various different buckets. Uh, there are data sources for advertising, uh, for analytics. Uh, we have mix panel and heap analytics support being added very soon. From an e-commerce standpoint, we have a few e-commerce platforms that we support pulling data from. Uh, we have a few payment systems that we are supporting. We are currently working on Stripe, Square, and Adyen, three of the popular payments gateways. Uh, that support should be going live in uh, in a month here. Uh, from a support system standpoint, we support Zendesk and Zendesk Chat. Uh, we've also added support for uh, Freshdesk as well and, uh, and a couple of others which we are currently testing. Should be rolled out pretty soon. And then SurveyMonkey, Salesforce, uh, and a few other systems as well. And from a database standpoint, we do support moving data from an on-premises database to a cloud database. So if you think about the market going forward, there are going to be a lot of on-premises workloads that will find their way into the cloud and customers could be leveraging our solution to do that migration. Uh, they could also be leveraging our solution to pull data from all of these different databases, consolidate that data into a data warehouse as well, depending on whatever uh, they choose to do. And as far as data warehouses are concerned, uh, we are currently uh, supporting five different uh, data warehouses. ADW is Oracle's autonomous data warehouse and BigQuery is a product by Google. Uh, we are looking to support uh, Snowflake data warehouse by the end of the year. Uh, so let's go through a simple workflow on uh, uh, what a customer would go through. The idea really is, uh, is basically to take data from these source systems and push them into a fully managed data warehouse in the cloud. Uh, for instance, BigQuery and ADW are fully managed data warehouses. So if a customer decides to use them, they don't need to hire a database administrator or anybody really uh, to manage the database because these are fully managed by the cloud provider uh, themselves, which really opens up the opportunity for small to mid market companies to start leveraging uh, data warehousing as a central repository for all of their data, something that has not been possible until a couple of years back. So let's go through a simple workflow of uh, how we pull data from, let's say, Facebook. So over here, I can uh, give an integration name. We use the integration name to create a table in the data warehouse. You can decide the frequency with which you want to, uh, uh, us to pull data on to pull data from your Facebook account. Uh, you can specify the history on how much historical data you need. You hit next. We authenticate with Facebook. Since I'm already logged in, uh, it pre-authenticated me and it's going to come back and tell me that I have two Facebook ad accounts that uh, I have access to. So I'm going to select one of them. And there are three REST APIs that Facebook supports. 
essentially data for data related to ads, the campaigns that a marketer is running, and all the insights that uh, Facebook has, right? Hit next. You can configure what fields and columns you need, uh, you want us to pull from Facebook. You can even customize. If you don't want to see certain fields, I'm going to make some random selections here. And similarly with ads data as well. And you hit submit. That's all you have to do to create a data source. Essentially what, uh, what I've done here is I have instructed Dayton to set up one end of the pipeline, which is one end of, uh, which is basically pulling data from Facebook. But an integration is not complete until I provide a destination. So let me go ahead and select BigQuery as an option. And I'm going to call it a demo warehouse. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to be asked to authenticate with Google. I will select my uh, account here. Provide us permission so that we can load that data into the data warehouse. And over here, we have a few data sets that, uh, that you can see. Select one of the data sets that we own. Hit submit. That's all you have to do. Now, basically what I've done is I've created a data warehouse. I have created a source. And you will see that uh, being listed here. Facebook underscore demo is what I had uh, given. Within the next one hour, you will start noticing that there are, there are tables that will be created in the data warehouse and data will be uh, st data will start to populate the data warehouse uh, shortly after that now similarly i had uh, set some of these up uh, earlier uh, this is clavio zendesk chat criteo so some use cases here are uh, if i'm a marketing person and i'm running uh, marketing ads on various different channels and i want to see what my return on ad spend is currently the workflow is for marketers to download a bunch of spreadsheets aggregate that data from these spreadsheets that they've downloaded from different ad platforms aggregate that and then get to a return on ad spend number by building a data warehouse an analysis such as that one can be fully automated so sticking to the product for now uh, uh, there's some other features within the product let's say i want to uh, uh, modify a particular integration what I can do is I can hit this pencil icon here. I'm going to select Bing Ads as an example. I'm going to hit the icon. Hit next. I'll be taken to a similar workflow that you had seen earlier. Uh, this is the uh, ad account that uh, we use for Saras. You can either remove a table by unselecting this. Essentially, what we are instructing Dayton to do is to no longer populate this particular table in the data warehouse. And instead, I want these two other tables to be populated. All I have to do is make those selections, hit next, select the fields that I need, and over here as well. And I don't need certain fields, so I'm going to remove that, those. And that's all, just hit submit. So behind the scenes, what happens is you had one table. So consider that use case, right? Originally, there were two tables, data for which was being pop pushed or extracted and pushed into the data warehouse. We had decided to unselect one of them so that that table will no longer be populated and we decided to add two more tables to that particular integration. So data on behind the scenes will create those two additional tables, do a full extract of data from the source system for those two tables and then put it up on a schedule so that every hour or every half an hour depending on the frequency the user has selected, all the incremental data gets loaded into the data warehouse. So it's a very neat way where uh, uh, I don't I don't need a, to hire a data engineer. I don't need to somebody to write code for data pipeline. Instead, if I'm a business user, I know SQL or I know how to use Tableau, we can very simply make all the data accessible for them right out of the bat without them having to do a whole lot of effort. We have a dashboard here which highlights uh, how Dayton has been performing, how many rows it has processed, uh, how many data loads it ran, how many rows it has written, the average load time, etc., uh, over a period of time, uh, how many integrations they've been leveraging, etc., etc. And then, in order to increase transparency into the pipeline, we have uh, uh, we give you a section for logs where everything that is happening in the pipeline is logged. So you could technically hit that icon over there. We will pull up the log associated with that particular job that was run and show that to the user. 
so that way it it allows us to build a level of trust in to the platform now we have a section for notification where uh, uh, where we show users all the notifications that are being generated either by the pipeline or by users adding new data sources etc we have a uh, my account page where you can uh, uh, set up all your preferences you can invite new users to uh, this existing account that you have uh, and then you we give you configuration options on what kind of emails uh, you expect to receive uh, from Dayton as a platform so at a high level that's what uh, the solution is about and uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback when we when we connect thank you